Stick around so you don't miss. We're about to reminisce. So this video is all about Windows XP, but if you need a little help getting rid of that Activate Windows 10 nonsense in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, well, we're working with BobKeys.com. We are working with them to bring you an additional 25% off on products like Windows 10 Pro. Use coupon code TS25 and you're going to save 25% off the already good price of $18.08, bringing it down by another $4.50. You can save money on Windows 10 Home and also 25% off as well with Office 2019. Now, once you get your key, it'll appear in your account. Just copy that, hit start and type activation and activation settings will come up. Click on change product key and then paste your product key here. Or if it's that's not there, it may just say add product key or update product key if you have not already activated. Just paste it in there and then you will fully be able to use Windows 10. Thanks to bobkeys.com. And now to our regularly scheduled program. So I put together a Windows XP computer using parts from mostly the XP era, some stuff from slightly before the XP era, and then some stuff that was right on the cusp of being the Windows Vista era, talking about the GPU mainly. But I wanted a little bit more power, but I still wanted to stick with Windows XP because that's the OS that I have the most nostalgia for, other than maybe Windows 98 and 2000 was pretty good too. But that whole era was like a really important golden chunk in my development as a PC gamer. And I think a lot of you are going to remember some of these parts from the old Tiger Direct days because when I was working at Tiger Direct, um, we went through this entire, I guess, stuff. P45, the P35 chipset, um, the NVIDIA, you know, Enforce chipsets. Remember those? I almost went with one of those because I wanted to have easy SLI. But the Intel chipsets were just a lot better. I'm sorry, NVIDIA. I mean, NVIDIA no longer makes chipsets, but... 680i was okay, I guess. It was pretty cool. Anyway, so we're going to mostly just joke around. I'm going to show you the parts that are in this machine, uh, and we'll just kind of remember some of the old days, and uh, that's what this video is all really going to be about. So first off, let's take a look. The case came well before Windows XP. I believe this case was around um, back in the Windows 98 days. I'm not sure if it was around before then, but sort of a ridiculous case. Um because everyone had one. This was like the gaming case. It had all the stuff you need. It had front panel ports. Um, this model does not have the front panel audio. I'm not sure if you could get that or not, but it has Firewire on the front. It's got USB, uh, USB 2 for the front. This is the Chief Tech Dragon, and there were some other varieties of the exact same thing. I think Antec made a version of this case, so other manufacturers actually made the same chassis which was kind of interesting. Now, my biggest gripe on this is the fact that the fans on the front and the fans on the back are 80 millimeters and they sound like vacuum cleaners. Like when you turn this thing on, what I was, I was like, how am I gonna make a video? I wanna have this thing lit up. I wanna show off all these ridiculous green LEDs. There's some cathode tubes in there. See right there, those cathode tubes. I wanted to be able to show this off, but it was so loud. I mean, it was like, you turn this thing on and you're like, well, I'm just going to sit here beside this turbine engine and talk to you. So that didn't work out. And I decided some modern convenience was totally okay. The main thing is the heart and the core components are old school, right? But the power supply and the fans, I decided that modern was okay. That's not really part of my nostalgic experience, especially if I can experience this at a way lower decibel rate. So in the back here, I've got a 120 millimeter Noctua fan. And in the front there, I've got an Arctic 120 millimeter fan. 20 millimeters. So I love the Noctua NFA. This is the NFA 12 right here. X25, yeah, NFA 12 X25. So these are like your one fan fits all for everything, for your case fans, for CPUs, whatever. I love that fan and it's so quiet. And now I'm sitting right here beside the system. It's running, it's booted totally fine and can you hear it not really all right now let's talk about motherboards this was a dark time in motherboard world you had some good chipsets right some really good chipsets but there was a lot of things that were changing you had the same motherboard 
and you'd get like one variety that had DDR2. And then like a few months later, they'd release version 1.5 or 1.6 or whatever it was, and it would have DDR3 slots. And then you'd have different combinations of PCI, and then you had PCI Express showing up and one speed PCI Express. So you'd have some that would have a bunch of regular PCI slots, and then some that would only have a couple PCI slots. So anyway, as you can see here on Gigabyte's website, there are so many versions of like basically the same motherboards. There are way too many motherboards, but a lot of people were building computers back then. It was really hard to figure out which motherboard was going to be the best for you. And then sometimes you get a board and then as soon as you get it, they would release, you know, revision 1.6. And you're like, I just bought revision 1.5. What's 1.6 have? You know, they, oh, they fixed a couple things. They changed the, the soldering on this. They added another port here and moved this one there. So anyway, I ended up getting the Gigabyte GAE P45 UD3P version 1.6. And this will run not SLI, it'll run Crossfire, but there's some Russians who hacked this because this chipset, it, it, you know, Intel could have totally made it work with SLI. They were bickering and fighting with NVIDIA and at this point in time, they were like, no, it's gonna have uh, ATI only. This is before AMD purchased ATI. So all the Radeon cards uh, were uh, ATI at that point, right? So they're like, no, this is Intel. And whoever, the John Intel was like, no, they're only gonna have Crossfire. So you could put two 2900 XTs in here and have a really fast system. But I wanted the 8800 GTX because that's where a lot of my gaming was done in this era. So I've got the BFG 8800 GTX in here. Look at this monster. That's my grain man right there. And this is one of the fastest, if not the fastest, 8800 GTX cards on the market. 768 megabytes of dedicated video memory. There's my grain man. Look at him. I used to love this card. Unfortunately, BFG is no longer with us. I also have an EVGA. And the EVGA is not overclocked to as high of a clock rate. But it still is a really nice card. And EVGA was at their prime. Then they they have not slowed down. EVGA has always produced quality products. I haven't. I don't think I've gone a generation without uh, an an EVGA GPU that was really nice. Motherboards pretty good usually, but their graphics cards have always been top notch. So I've also got an EVGA. If I can figure out how to make that Russian SLI hack work in some mode other than safe mode, because I saw it online, I was like, oh yes, it can work. And then I realized that they were doing it in safe mode. However, they got it to work. I'm not sure how they got DirectX to work in safe mode to do their 3D mark tests, but I'll keep looking into that. Just don't have a lot of time right now for that. So anyway, that GPU is really fast. It can max out in most games at 60 FPS, except for Crisis. You know, Crisis came out around this time. And for the CPU, um, you know, you can go out and get one of those extreme Intel CPUs, but they're really expensive even now. Or you can do this. You can go to eBay and this, this one's out of stock, but there you can find these. Uh, and you can order from Hong Kong or China. You can get the Intel Xeon X5470. And these were not normally made for the socket 775. They were made for the Xeon socket, which was a tiny bit different. However, these crazy bastards have soldered a couple of the pins together to make it compatible with uh, your LGA775 socket without any problems whatsoever. And it's in there right now. And the thing about this is these are clocked uh, higher than a lot of the other quad cores out there. You can't do as much overclocking with them and they do run a little bit hot, but it's faster. And it's basically one of the fastest 775 uh, CPUs. Not quite as fast as the extreme stuff, but it's so much cheaper that it's easy to recommend. Now for the memory, this is a DDR2 motherboard right before DDR3. And there wasn't too much of a huge speed difference between the two. Um, and I remember liking this Corsair XMS2 memory a lot. So I've got, I've actually got more memory than the CP, or more memory than the operating system can handle. But if I decide to switch it up to Vista or Windows 7, really, I and mean, that was like a better version of Vista. But you know, if I decide to switch it up, it'll be just fine. But so I have four sticks, and each one of those is two gigabyte. Now the 32-bit OS only is going to recognize four gigabytes of that memory. But like I said, if I upgrade, it'll be like, oh hey, you've got eight gigabytes of memory. So. And I haven't noticed any slowdown, which is really weird. It feels really snappy even when I have like 15 tabs open and I'm like doing stuff in the OS. It just feels really snappy. So maybe it's the totality of the build plus the efficiency of Windows XP. I don't know. Now, back in the day, there was a little thing called environmental audio. Environmental audio extensions. EAX. Because X is what extensions. EAE sounds dumb. Well, actually, Asus made a sound card that worked with EAX, and that really pissed off Creative Labs, and there was a little bickering and fighting. It worked with EAX5. 
but I, I'm not sure whatever happened to that. But anyway, if you want to experience games with that environmental audio, you're going to need a sound card. So I think everybody pretty much ran a sound card back in those days. It was pretty important to have something like that. So I put an Audigy 2 ZS in here because that um, pretty much works with all the old versions of EAX. 24-bit, 192 kilohertz card. Um, it's not really for listening to music. That's not the, the point here. And for a lot of modern systems, I wouldn't recommend putting one of those uh, in your system unless you really, 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 really need something like that for EAX. For music and stuff, you probably have a better experience with your onboard audio, believe it or not. Output impedance can be a thing if you're using headphones. So there's a lot of caveats when it comes to this, but it does have the EAX audio, and I think it does sound pretty good. And uh, a lot of times, when you, even when you play these new games, are these old games on a newer uh, operating system using your open AL or trying to do some emulation or something? A lot of times there can be stuttering. I had that issue with Oblivion, really drove me crazy. And I threw a Sound Blaster FX in one of my new machines and enabled EAX and it was like, oh, the stuttering's gone. If you're gonna play your games, especially back in the day, you need the EAX uh, enabled sound card. So any of the Sound Blaster Oddities or most of the Sound Blaster Oddities, the Oddities are also dirt cheap. So there's that. The one you really want is the Audigy 2 ZS or the RX if you want to have like a 600 uh, ohm headphone amp built in as well. But it's up to you. Either one of those is going to be fine. And they're, I mean, they're good sound cards. Really don't need a sound card these days, but back then, you know. You also are going to want a DVD burner and maybe a CD burner as well. So this one has both. Uh, only the DVD burner is hooked up right now because I'm, I would have to switch some things around because this only have has one IDE slot. I mean, you can get SATA. This is all SATA, so whatever. But I would recommend, like, what I have in here is all IDE, but I would recommend going SATA and just getting yourself, like, a light on 10 bucks SATA DVD burner. Throw that in there. It should work just fine. But that'll allow you to play all your old games that you have on DVD and CD-ROM. I'm sorry that we have an 8X DVD burner and a 48X CD burner. So if you want to burn stuff all day, you probably could. I mean, I'll show you a few pieces of software from Slysoft in the software video that's coming up next, if you're really curious about that. Most people are just going to use daemon tools or something similar and mount your ISOs and install stuff that way, then grab yourself a no-CD crack and go to town. Or you could just use the GOG versions, which I've found so far. The GOG EXE files have all been installing uh, fine on this, so that's pretty cool too. And then grab yourself some media, right? Some Tayo Yudin for CDs and some Verbatim when it comes to DVDs. Those are the two brands, Verbatim and Tayo Yudin. Verbatim for DVDs, Tayo Yudin for CDs. All right, for the hard drive, I happen to have this just sitting around. Probably should have gone SATA with the components that we have, but it's running nice and snappy. Whatever. I mean, I've even, I even could have put an SSD in here and been ridiculously silly, but they weren't, they weren't around back then. So I've got this Hitachi 250 gigabyte uh, IDE hard drive. It's in there. Whatever. Runs just fine. And that's pretty much enough room for a lot of my games. Um, it might be nice to have a second hard drive in there in case I wanted to like reinstall the OS or something like that. I mean, I could have made a couple partitions, but I just I like doing that with a couple hard drives. But it's up to you how you want to do that. And now the thing that we're not going to talk about up here on the top, right? That's that Corsair RM850 fancy, nice looking. It looks totally out of place in this machine. But this Corsair, Corsair power supply, it's really quiet, which I like but it's newer, so it's kind of cheating, but this GPU likes a lot of power. The CPU likes a lot of power. This stuff is really power hungry. I mean, back back in these days, a lot of companies were making like 1600 watt power supplies for people who are running multiple GPUs and stuff because they would drink the power. So yeah, I kind of cheated on that. I, I, I think it's okay to cheat when it comes to your PSU because you don't want to use an old used power supply because if this goes bad it can shock your entire system it can destroy other components and stuff like that so it's okay you don't have to be nostalgic with your power supply use a good power supply that hasn't been used that much you don't want too many hours on your PSU you don't want an old crappy PSU you want something that's 80 plus so it's okay and I don't feel bad about it at all now let's just talk about the aesthetics overall now you'll notice the cooling unit I have on there. Um, that's also something I just grabbed whatever I had around, you know. And I ended up with a Fantex, just 120 millimeter low profile cooling unit. And it had a white fan on it that was really quiet. Actually a few more RPMs than the one that's on there. But I ended up just going on and grabbing a green LED uh, fan because the white one didn't look right. The main thing is the fan on the CPU 
and to the overall ambiance of the system. And then we have these two cathode tubes. Now, I, I got this from somebody on Twitter. I was like, hey, I really want one of these chief tag cases. I can't find them anywhere. Couldn't find one for sale. So a couple people on, on Twitter came to the rescue and were like, hey, we'll send you some stuff. So community members, thank you very much. You're both awesome. I got one of these, and I also got a silver one with a few differences. So I might put another system in that one, maybe a Windows 98 system or something in that one. But having these like green cathode tubes, that really brings me back because that, that's how we used to do it. You know, if you wanted like a little bit of extra color in your system, you'd go ahead and get these and you'd tie them down using cable ties or you'd glue them or stick them or whatever, you'd Velcro, I don't know. And you would put them in your cases in different spots and they would just add a little glow to the case. Now these are too bright to put on your desk. It just, it's too much. So you have a little rocker switch that you can either feed out the back of the case, you can feed it out the front, uh, or you can just leave it inside the case, which is it is right now. I'm probably end up feeding it out the front somewhere, but you have a rocker switch that you hook up to a Molex, uh, and then you can just turn it on and off, and toggle it however you like. One other thing I want to note is um, in the front there, that fan is kind of in a weird spot. It's not pulling air from the front very well. It's kind of just circulating air inside the case, so that's not good. I need to cover up the sides and create a channel to the vent, that 80 millimeter vent that's in the front, and I'll end up doing that pretty soon. But right now it's not running hot, so I'm not too worried about it. It's running pretty cool. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, this also has a two and a half inch floppy drive if you want to play some really old school games. Now I'm going to talk about software in the next video, and then I'll talk about gaming. But I do want to say this because there's a lot of nostalgia for the parts and also a lot of nostalgia for gaming on Windows XP. So I want to make a recommendation. If you're not extremely nostalgic for all of this stuff and you're not really extremely nostalgic for Windows XP, I would say just play your old school games on Windows 10 or Linux, whichever one you can you know, get these old games on. But GOG has done a really nice job of updating a lot of these old games uh, hooking up some of the old DOS games even with DOSBox and making them work on modern hardware. There's a lot of nuance and there's a lot of headache and a lot of stuff like Steam doesn't even work on Windows XP anymore even though it came out back in those days. You can't even connect to the Steam server. Even if you install an old version of Steam, it won't work. So you'll have to find some other way to play your Steam games. I'm talking like Half-Life and all that kind of stuff. You'll have to have older versions of Half-Life that came before Steam that were like executable files. You'll have to like figure out something else and it's I don't I haven't even tried Half-Life 2 on this I'm not even sure how that'll work but I'm sure I can figure it out and there's got to be a way to get Steam to work offline but I couldn't even get it connect to connect to the servers even with an old version of Steam so that's kind of annoying um, there's just a, there was a lot of frustration I had a lot of brick walls uh, some weird issues here and there with Firefox and stuff like that just not you can't get all the updates and stuff uh, Firefox does not support the old versions at all you can't get like new themes and like if you want to get like other stuff you're gonna have to go to github and try to find versions of the plugins and add-ons or whatever you know if you're a purist and all that stuff and you have to have the original hardware you know what i can understand whatever i might play some games on this and see how it comes out in fact i might stream some with it we'll see but um otherwise you know windows 10 is a pretty damn good operating system actually i think it's the best windows fight me better than windows 7. so there you have it that is the system oh also want to mention that the fennec products worked perfectly with this plugged them in if you got the there we go this is the arctic fox mouse that i'm always using here at the desk it's white and it's beautiful and then we also have our mother membrane keyboard which is virtually silent thanks to it being uh, a membrane keyboard but it's also has a it has a nice poppy feel for a membrane i'm when i was over in china i tried about a thousand keyboards before i found the one i was like this one is the one that feels correct let's work with these so it feels really good for a membrane keyboard and they're all available over at epicpants.com so head over there and grab yourself a mouse pad and a t-shirt while you're there it supports us we support you by giving you the hardware that you need and it works just fine with your windows xp machine so let me know what you think of this build in the comments again it is a little all over the place i understand that it's not perfect when it comes to windows xp borderline windows vista but whatever it's just nostalgia we had fun did we did we not have fun I think we had fun. All right, I'll see you in the comments.